In this video, we will look at how can we use Excel to calculate the expected value, or we can call it a mean or average, and the variance and the standard deviation for general discrete discrete probability distribution. And so in order to do this practice, and you need to open the data set called the data.excel, and I already attached on the D2L. So this is the data set you will use to do this practice. So first, let me give you some background about this data set. So this data set actually is telling you the distribution for the average customer will visit a store per day. So you can see the possible value of the number of customer visiting the store per day is 3, 6, and 9. And so on the column B, I'm representing the probability for each possible outcomes. So for instance, um, we have 25% chance to have, on average, three. Uh, we have 25% chance to have three customers visit the store per day, and we have 50% chance to have, um, uh, to have six customers visiting the store per day, and we have 25% chance to have nine customers visiting the store today. And so let's look at the first question. So the question number A, it asks, does the table certify the probability for discrete probability distribution? And so now we're going to ask ourselves, what is the prob uh, properties for the discrete probability distribution? So in the class, um, we mentioned we have two properties. The first property is for all the probability I give you here should uh, satisfy the following, con uh, the first condition is every probability should uh, no smaller than zero and uh, smaller and equal to one. So look at all three probabilities. Are they satisfy this condition? The answer is yes. So every one is positive number and every one is smaller than one. So the second property is if you add all the probability together, you should get one. So let's add them together. 25% plus 50% plus 25% and you got one. So this probability also satisfy the second condition. So which means this table actually is my discrete probability distribution. So this is the two criteria you will use to examine any probability table to see if they are considered as a discrete probability distribution. Now let's look at the second question. So after we identify this is the general discrete probability distribution, and we're going to solve the second question. So the second one, calculate the expected number of customer visiting store per day. So now the question is, uh, before we go to the Excel, and we're going to go back to think about what's the formula we should use to calculate the expected value for the discrete probability distribution. So I'll give you well, a few seconds to think about it. So yes, the formula we learned in the class is mu equal to the summation of x, f, x. And the x is the random variable's possible values, and fx is the probabilities. So the mu stands for the expected value. So now let's look at our data. Do we know the value of x, the possible value of x? Yes, there's 3, 6, and 9. Do we know the possible value of the probability corresponding to each of possible outcomes? Yes, that's 25%, 50%, 25%. So <clears throat> uh, if we are trying to use the simple, uh, the very uh, original way, if you have calculator, you definitely can do 3 multiplied by 25% plus 6 multiplied by 50% plus 9 multiplied by 25%. But think about the real world. In the business world, you really have a hard time to see the possible value of x only have 3. Sometimes you have 20, 10, 15. So how can you really ca efficiently calculate this kind of the, um, uh, statistics? So the best way is to use the Excel. So the formula we're going to learn in today's lecture is called uh, sum product. So this is the formula you need to remember it called sum product. So first, uh, what this function is doing is they are looking for different array in your formulas. And then after you multiply them together, and they will sum one by one. So let's using this one to calculate our expected value first. And you will have some clear idea about how we use this formula. So equal to sum, don't forget the equal sign. If you want to use the formula in the uh, Excel, product in parentheses. So then they give you the hint, array 1, array 2, array 3. So there are means, what you can see here is that each element you are going to go into multiply together and then sum them together. So the first array, if you look at this data set, uh, our formula actually is x. 
and the second array is our fx. So let's select the number we don't type in. So the array one is x, so which is 3, 6, and 9. So make sure don't select the labels. Don't select the labels. And a common to separate the, your first array and second array, then we sec select the second array. So in column B, B2, B3, and B4. And now we close the parentheses, and we got 6. So how can we interpret the 6? So 6 means, on average, we will have 6 customers to visit this uh, store per day. So this is the average. So now, uh, let's using the same idea to consider question number C. Calculate variance and the standard deviation. The first thing, as I said before, many times, many, many times. So the Excel here is only help us to improve the speed of the calculation. But it will never ever able to do something beyond your brain. So you need to tell the computer what the formula should look like. And you need to know how the formula looks like in order to use the sum product. So let's look at the variance we learned in the class. So in the class, we learned the formula we use to calculate variance. So the variance is sigma square and equal to summation. Again, we have summation. And the parentheses x minus mu which we just calculate mu, which is expected values, and parentheses, square, and f, x. And this is my sigma which is square, which is a variance. And the standard deviation, which is sigma, which equal to the square root of sigma square. So obviously, if we will be able to calculate variance, and it will be very easy to calculate standard deviation. So the trouble is how we use the Excel to calculate this formula. So the same similar format you can see for between the expected value and the variance. So they all have the summation form. They all have two parts and multiply together. So remember, in the formula I said we have array one and array two. So look at the variance. What is going to be my array one? And what is going to be my array two? Yes, you're right. So the array one actually is here, x minus mu and the power by two square. So this is my array one, and fx still be my x uh, array two. So now let's look at our data set again. So we had a value for x, we had a value for fx, but we don't have the value for x minus mu square. So we need to do some calculation before we use the sum product. So that's why I leave the space, I create the column C and the D. So we use column C and the D to calculate the x minus mu square for each corresponding x. So let's think about so uh, before we are uh, moving on, and we want to mention that uh, we're going to use in the Excel's drop-down function and uh, to uh, speed speedize our calculation. So using equal, so x, so the first version of x is 8.1, and minus mu. So where's mu? So which is expect value we just calculated. So x minus mu. And think about if we're using the drop down function and what you're going to see is a2 is keep updating. So which is when we move to the c2 and a2 becomes a, uh, a3. C3 will become A3, but the B8 can also become B9. That's not what we want. Actually, we want to lock B8 because B8, will, we don't want to update it. So in order to lock the B8 and put your mouth, uh, select the, any space between B and 8, and then find the F4 on your keyboard. So make sure you don't use in the Mac. So the F4, the keyboard F4 is for the uh, regular PC only. So. F4. So after you push F4 on your keyboard, you're going to find you put the dollar sign ahead of B and ahead of the B, uh, 8. So now if you said, okay, my laptop is very simple, I don't have F4, what can you do? So another way is manually find the dollar sign on your keyboard and put the one dollar sign ahead of B and one dollar sign ahead of 8. So that's what you can do too. And then push 8 enter. So you got negative 3, so that's the first observation, and then we drag you down. So then we finish all the calculations, so very fast. So before we use some product, we still need to square what we got in column C, because our first array is x minus mu square. So then we type in equal sign, choose the C2, and the power by 2, 
and look at the sign I'm using as the power, so square power by two, and I push push enter. So you got nine, and the same idea, and I drag it down. So now we have our first array in our formula, and the fx is our second array, so we can use sum product now. So in the variance equal to sum product parenthesis choose array one common and array two close the parentheses and push enter so 4.5 is my variance so now after we got variance it's very easy to get standard deviation which is the square root of my variance so in chapter three we look at uh, how you can find a uh, standard deviation um, if you know the variance so do you remember the formula we're using Yes, that's called a square root. And in the Excel, the formula called SQRT, so square root. So that's the short form for square root. So then in the standard deviation cell, we type in equal sign SQRT in the parentheses and choose the variance you got and close the parentheses and push enter. So the 2.12 is the standard deviation for this. Uh, general discrete probability distribution. So in next video, and we're going to look at how we calculate probability, variance, standard deviation for a special uh, discrete uh, distribution called the binomial discrete distribution. So make sure you understand this concept, then we move on to the next one. Thank you for watching.